My name is Isabel and uh, I come from Angola. I was, uh, I grew up in Angola, I'm, I'm an Angolan child and I uh, went to school there and then came over to the UK to study when I was around 14 years old to do my O-levels, as they were called those days in my A-levels. And then I went to university just around the corner, to King's College, University of London, uh, probably your competitor to LSE, <laughs> from what I gather. Um, and then after that, I went uh, back to Angola, got my first job. And very shortly after that, I started my first business as a, as a very small company, as a very small entrepreneur. When you start working, you have to start working with the passion. You first have to really choose your path. And I guess many questions we ask ourselves when you're around 20, 21, 23, when you're just about to finish college is what am I going to do next? Because we're quite sure where we're going to go to school, we're quite sure pretty much what we want to do at university. But then the real questions start, what is my next opportunity, what am I going to do? And there's a little bit of a sense of a panic of um, what is that next step? So whatever step you choose, you really have to choose it with a passion something that you enjoy doing. Because there's nothing worse than going to work and, and hating it. And if you do something with a passion and if you start small and you really dedicate yourself, you will, you will definitely grow. Also, you mentioned about wealth and I think that um, we really shouldn't work um, for money or being motivated by money. That cannot be your main motivator. I think your main motivator has to be the fact that you want to change things around you, the fact that you want to bring opportunities to others, the fact that you can improve your environment, that there's something in your environment that you feel that you could really, really make a difference. So when you're driven by that kind of force, that's, that's bigger than thinking about of any numbers or any wealth or any financial gains. I definitely believe in promoting women. In the companies I work, I make sure that uh, um, the, the percentage of women is equal to men. And sometimes in most of my teams, they're female-led, if not all female. I don't do that on purpose because I don't think we should uh, treat men unfairly either. <laughs> so, but I do believe in equality. And equality really starts, by, women deserve a fair evaluation. When you're evaluating a candidate that's a, that's a female candidate, you have to give fair judgment. You can't have a prejudgment uh, on the outstart. And then girls need to have education. Sometimes it's very difficult for African girls to stay in school because they need to help at home, um, help with their brothers, with their sisters, help with tasks at home. And unfortunately until today some parents, if they have to choose which sibling are they going to educate or who are they going to spend money on, they often prefer the boy rather than the girl. Well, I, I feel very sad about that. I hope that that one day changes and that girls are given the equal opportunity for uh, education and as far as government is concerned I think we need to do more in terms of policy to really have quotas we need to have fixed percentages um, for women representation both in government and in society I love I love Angola I love Africa I have some I don't know the whole of the continent I've been to, to a few countries I think that um, we have a lot of opportunity at home, there's, there's a lot of things that have to be done. It's not easy, but it's also not easy in Europe, it's not easy in South America, it's not easy in Asia either, so we can't expect things to be easy. But there, is, there are real opportunities and there's a lot to do, especially if you have the know-how, if you've been exposed, if you have education and you have the will to do it. I think uh, going back home and doing something positive is uh, definitely a good choice.